Good day to you folks. Welcome to another episode of That Ninja Show. Shinobi One here. It is March the 12th of 2024. And tonight's episode is none other than part two of the interview with Lucinda. Uh, for those of you that are already tuned in, saw part one and have been messaging me and saying, hey, when's part two coming out? Uh, was planning on trying to get it out tomorrow, but I'm trying to get this going tonight. So just wanted to finish up a lot of little last minute things and make sure everything's kind of kind of running well. Also, tomorrow is the birthday of the one and only Sam Furstenberg. So, if you get a chance, if you know where he's at on his social media, be it on Facebook, on Instagram, hell, hit all of them. Wish him a happy birthday. Uh, say that you're sending him some That Ninja Show loving. Or, well, I don't know. That may kind of creep him out. So, just wish him a happy birthday. How about that? Um... Sam, if you're watching, early happy birthday to you. Really appreciated everything that you did uh, with that interview. Can't thank you enough, my friend. So, yes, um, once again, if you haven't gotten it already, you need to. I do like this poster. I wish they made a bigger poster of it. Hint, hint, people who put this out, make a bigger poster. And then, um, yeah. Uh, check out Sam Furstenberg's book as well. Check out Lucinda on the Breaking Movies, Grease 2. Um, and of course, oh yeah, that movie, Ninja 3. Yeah, about that. So, folks, coming up, we're going to watch it go with part two of the interview with Lucinda. Enjoy. No. So when did you when did you start getting into dance? Because my my mom was used to run a, a dance goods store here in San Antonio, Texas, where she would work with ballet and jazz and tap. And so my nieces were around that at all times. And they started they started my niece slash goddaughter at the young age of think of like three or four. And then she got into singing and acting and everything for a while too. But now she uh she got her go college degree in journalism and now works for a TV network here or a TV station here in, in Texas. So wh what age did you start at with, with dance? I was four. My mother okay. started, um, opened up her dance studio in our basement when I was four. Oh, and okay. I have, I have uh, three older sisters, one younger who came later. Um, but yeah, we just started in, in our own basement and, uh, my mother had a lot of, um, her, her thing was really more musical theater and comedy and character stuff. You know, we learned ballet and tap and jazz, but, you know, she was really big into, you know, the, you know, the old, you know, musical stuff. So that was primarily uh, what I learned. And then when I was uh, 16, she joined Dance Masters of America. And that was when I was the first one in her studio to compete for a title, uh, which I which I won. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so it was just my life. I mean, I don't remember a time when there wasn't music happening in our house and, you know, whether Later on, you know, she did move into a studio. It wasn't always in our basement, but she always had her tape recorder, her little cassette recorder and, you know, playing the music and doing choreography. I mean, it was just, it was just a part of my life from four years. I mean, from the time I was born really, because, you know, even though she started teaching when I was four, that was just her. She was just all about dance. Yeah. That's amazing. And so when, um, with, with your training in dance and, and, and also being at rehearsals and waiting and stuff, did that help temper you for when you got into movies where it's the whole hurry up and wait period where you got to wait for something to happen and it's like, all right, here we go. Yeah. That hurry up and wait thing is tough. Um, you know, I had done a couple of plays in high school 
as a dancer, West Side Story and The Princess and the Pea. Um, and in rehearsals, there is a little a bit of that, you know, waiting around, but, you know, you're with a group of people and everybody's just talking and chatting and playing around, goofing around. But um, as far as filming, that was really hard. And, you know, you can only be so prepared all the time. I mean, you know, you get all warmed up and, you know, you're ready to go, you'll do a rehearsal. And then all of a sudden it's like an hour and a half and you're cold again. And then, oh, they're ready to shoot now. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know? um, I mean, I don't know. It's just hard to even, you know, get used to that. But, you know, we were young and you just deal and you learn how to stretch out really, really fast. And there's always a little adrenaline that helps you along the way. But um, yeah, it's, you know, later on after doing the films, you know, I continued to do commercials and this and that, you know, after I had my children. And that's really when I I found that I was just quite bored, that sitting around and waiting. I was I was thinking, I got a lot of things that I, I should be doing right now. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here on set and waiting, you know. So uh, it's one of the reasons that I just kind of let it go because I just sort of burned out on it. Understandable. Definitely understandable. Now, one of my passions is uh, collecting movie props and costumes. Costumes. And then, of course, I've got some swords that are movie props. And then, of course, from my little, my little claim to fame. Well, not really claim to fame, but from Revenge of the Ninja, the evil ninja mask. Oh. Um, talking with Sam. Sam, I know, has your boombox and your helmet from when you were the phone worker. And then he also bought a uh, he bought one of the police motorcycles, which he no longer has. But from any of your movies, either Ninja or Breaking, did you end up taking any movie props or costumes home with you or ended up buying anything off the set or? Very little. Um, nothing from Ninja. I I don't think I took one thing from Ninja. Um break in I have a pair of boots that I don't think ever got worn they there was a scene that um was cut you asked me about the ninja you didn't ask me about break in yes and um it was it was you know kind of a little uh, very pg love scene between ozone and kelly and uh they felt it was a little too risque um, for our characters and for that time, uh, and it got cut, but I had this great pair of boots that were, I still have them. They're, uh, like suede and they have that real pointy toe and like three buckles going up the ankle and they're kind of cool. So I took those, uh, a lot of my clothes, uh, kind of similar to Ninja just sort of disappeared. So there might've been a few things that I wanted that just weren't, they, they just disappeared. Um, there's that jacket that I wore, um, in the scene with, uh, Franco when, uh, we were at the, uh, party, um, with the guys. Anyway, there was a couple of things. I have a few t-shirts that are all cut up and have knots in them. And, you know, they, <laughs> I couldn't put them on right now if I tried. <laughs> and I actually have quite a few of my belts and some of the, the little wrist things, uh, I don't even know what those were called. Um, you know, so yeah, I have I have a little stash. I have a lot of my old <laughs> warmers, which I I had to let a few of them go. You know, they they were just uh, it was kind of yeah, it was time to let a few of them go. But I actually saved quite a few of my leg warmers from back in the day because we would stack two, three on top of each other. You know, they were a big deal. Oh yeah. Warmers, yeah. I, I remember my sisters wearing them, and then also going to school with a lot of girls that were like. And like their legs were this small, but then when they had them, oh, yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't be seen without them because to see a skinny ankle was like, oh, no, 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 no. Like you, <laughs> you had to have your leg warmers on. You wouldn't be caught dead without them. <laughs> was there ever a role for a movie that you wanted to audition for, but you decided, eh, nah, just kind of let it roll? Um. I never, no, I wanted everything. And the one role that I auditioned for that I really, really wanted was Flashdance. I did not know you auditioned for Flashdance. Auditioned for Flashdance. 
And uh, they didn't think I was ethnic looking enough. <laughs> That's what they told me. <laughs> wow. But I would have loved that. But then I got to do some of that flash dancey stuff in Ninja. And they actually permed my hair to look a little bit like Jennifer Beals. And um, yeah, so kind of worked out in a odd, weird way, <laughs> sort of. You did indeed. You still had your your flash dance moment, just in a different movie. So just, just in a different movie, yeah. And it was it was short lived. It was a just a little tiny bit of a flash dance thing. Yeah. We have some questions from subscribers that uh, and buddies of mine that wanted to know some things. Because uh, otherwise, I could continue on with all my questions, and you'd be like, I gotta get you. <laughs> <laughs> so. My buddy Josh, he he asked, he said, they say people with a dance background pick up on fight choreography a lot easier. Uh, how much would you say that your background in dance helped with the fight scenes? Oh, I, I mean, 100% true. Um, I think part of it was just being fit and flexible because you kind of have to have that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it... There were a lot of things uh, when I was training that they had to try and undo that you learn with, you know, turnout, being a dancer and fighting stances are not exactly, you know, you're not doing a second position turnout. Um, but yeah, absolutely. It helped. I cannot imagine. I, well, if they would have hired somebody who didn't have that kind of background, I guarantee there would have been a lot more doubling because it would it would be impossible to learn some of those kicks in the fight scenes the scene that i did with show in the temple was a hundred percent real like that was all me there was no stunt double in that scene awesome. and it was like if i forgot the choreography i he would have taken my head off i think or something bad would have happened um and I just don't, you know, that I think that would have been very, very hard for somebody that didn't have, you know, dance background with learning choreography, too, because it really is all choreography, you know. So, awesome. yeah. And then knowing that you did, that was all you again, show in the temple, because I, I study, I try and study these films because a lot of people that, like I said, they're about not only about the costumes and the props, but also even like. Some of the choreography because at one time i wanted to be a stunt choreographer and so i sat, sat there for a while and i was like i think that's all her but now i know <laughs> that, one is. that one is and it was about um that might have been the only scene that i can recall that was that was all my my fighting that was all me so because awesome. even even the pool table scene that was cutting in and out uh with the stunt double um alan was my trainer and i'm not sure why he got that part because <laughs> he was a lot bigger than me oh, yeah. <laughs> he's the one that crushed the the ball <laughs> yes um but i did, did all of those moves i did all of that and then they would have the stunt double, you know, there may have been an element in there that they wouldn't let me do or that they felt the stunt double would do better. I don't know. You know, that for me, it was disappointing because I just wanted to do it all. <laughs> I wanted it really authentic. <laughs> and and yes, I remember studying that scene where where it's the, the pool room or where you're fighting with, with the with in the billiards room. And I look close and I'm like, Alan, you can always tell when it's Alan because he's got some serious bushy, bushy yeah. eyebrows. And I was like, her eyebrows are not like that. I was like, it's like, boom, caterpillars right there. And I was like, that's not her. <laughs> <laughs> that's too funny. Yeah. Well, Brandon and Standela Seidel, they ask for anyone who might be catching the film for the very first time. What is the one thing about your character that you wish would stick with the viewer long after they watch the movie? Um, she was independent, strong-willed, and and as we said earlier, a badass chick. Yes. And 
I loved that about her character. And I will tell you that when I first arrived in Phoenix, Jordan and I went to see, I think it was Revenge of the Ninja, because I believe it was still out. It was, or they were playing it at one of the theaters there. And I remember watching that film and the one particular girl that was in it. And I was just going, oh my God, what have I done? You know, because <laughs> I didn't, I hadn't even read a script. <laughs> I auditioned with a scene or two and I didn't even know what the movie was all about. I, you know, I hadn't even read a script yet. Um, so I was quite relieved to find out that she was not that, you know, girl. And uh, yeah, she was a real strong, independent woman. And um, as I was too. Exactly. And you That's you were a am. badass in that movie, and that was the thing. It was, I I liked that it was that that Ninja Three was that departure from Revenge because, you know there 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 was a lot of movies that came out around that time that were the damsel in distress, and so, yeah. you know I had just gotten done seeing Empire Strikes Back in 1980, and then Jedi in in 83, and it's like, you know seeing Carrie Fisher as 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 prominent and as tough as she was, it was like we need more tough as nails women. And it's like, yeah. when you did that movie, I was just like, okay, she's not a damsel in the stress. You ain't going to mess with her. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. just throwing that extra evil ninja element, then yeah, that just kind of takes you over the, over the, the, the threshold there. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, it was a, that was a great part. I mean, you really did amazing with it. And, I, and that's one of the things that stays with me to this day where I'll go back and I can, that's one of my movies that I can watch over and over again. I'll be, at, I'll be working from home. And if I work from home, I'll have that playing in the background. So just wait in between calls. I can watch my movies. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so my buddy Jake asks, because he knows about your husband. If your husband ever decided to do an 80 celebrity edition of Survivor, would you compete? Well, my husband doesn't produce Survivor anymore. He did the first three Survivors. So oh, that, really? Okay. Uh, so that was a long time ago. And maybe back then, um, I, I I might have. But now, no way. I don't <laughs> want to suffer or go hungry or have to try and figure things out. I want the cushy life now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, told him, uh, I told him I was like I'm pretty much gonna be thinking that I'm gonna get a big hell no from her <laughs> I know I wouldn't do it I mean I I will say though uh that when I watch the competition shows I have such a great appreciation for you know the younger generations and I know there are some older people that do it too but um you know I just I remember so well my desire to be able to do it all to accomplish. I would try anything. There was nothing. I mean, literally, if they would have asked me to jump out of a tree, you know, that was, you know, 25 feet, I would have done it. I, I, you know, and so I just have a great appreciation for the people that do do those shows, um, you know, whether it's the, you know, surviving, you know, the jungle or even the dance competition show, anything, you know, because, um, you know, I lived that and it's it's just something that's so awesome, just that feeling of of you're invincible. And, you know, I I just really get a kick out of it. And I just have a great appreciation for everybody who who tries that because it's not easy. It's pretty damn hard. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I wouldn't do it. I, no, no, no. I think my my ticket's already punched. I probably would never do it. <laughs> <laughs> So my buddy Tim asked, uh, what was the one ninja thing that you wanted to do that they did not let you do? Hmm. One ninja thing. Well, I mean, again, um, it was really the, the fight scenes that I just wanted it to be so authentic. And I really did have a hard time with them bringing in the stunt doubles because I was there. I was sitting right there when I'm watching them do the same scene that I just did, that I just filmed. And I was just like, why do you have to do that? You know, and listen, I probably thought I was a lot better than I really was in the moment. They were actual 
ninjas. These guys, they were trained and they knew the, you know, style and the form and all of that stuff, you know, but that really was the only thing because I just wanted it to be authentic. And, you know, honestly, when I did break and it was sort of the same thing, um, they did not double me in break but I worked really, really hard to make sure that I could do live up to every expectation that they had and beyond to be able to do all of that myself without having to bring in a double. So. <laughs> now, I remember the interview in this where you talked about when you did the the spa scene that the girls that were that you were acting with got intimidated by you because you just had and I and I see the, the 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 facial features that you really made that intimidation look work because it was like I was like yeah that'd be kind of like uh no I don't want my head dunked in the water from you <laughs> they, they thought that I was gonna kill them <laughs> I think they thought I was gonna really kill them I use that face with my children, by the way. That's how they behaved when they were little. <laughs> <laughs> the well, mom looks like, oh, mom. Um, yeah, no, they, well, it was really <laughs> more just having them, you know, dunking them under the water. Um, I think that had it not been, if, if they didn't have to go under the water, it might not have been quite so scary. And I don't know why they would think that I would just hold them under there until they couldn't breathe. I, I don't know, but it was weird. they really were terrified. And, you know, the, I mean, they show them, they're like, like this with their heads up and, you know, I mean, I, I can't remember if I even was able, I don't know. I think I dunked the one girl. You did. I did dunk the one girl. Yeah. But they had to, there was some talking like, like, you know, this is all fake. She's not going to hurt you. <laughs> you know, it's just going to be a quick little dunk. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And meanwhile, you get the serious look on your face like, <laughs> no, this is real. <laughs> well, I, I was feeling pretty possessed by then. By the time we filmed that, I was in it deep. Like I, I was possessed. Yeah. There was <laughs> no messing around with this chick. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my buddy greg foster that bathing suit that's something that i should have kept was that bathing suit yes yeah because so i, I, don't know, what I know that that's one thing too there was because of course in the, in that time in the movies you had people that would talk back to the screen and and there was a guy that was just like damn <laughs> when you walked in <laughs> and you hear people laughing it was like all right we get you I'm right there with you, buddy. <laughs> but uh, my buddy, Greg Foster from Australia, he says, I love the breaking movies, but Ninja 3 was my favorite. Could you tell us uh, where, did you gain more popularity from Ninja 3 or the breaking movies? Hmm. Well, um, probably the breaking movies. And I think that would only be because people that watch a ninja movie are really into the ninja stuff. And the dance movies, you know, there's foot, I mean, you know, dance movies are dance movies and they're more like families go and they bring their children and, you know, and so I, and, and it was the first one released. So um, more often than not, when I would be, get recognized out on the streets or, you know, in a store or whatever, it was usually always for break-in, special K. And, <laughs> but, but I have to say that, you know, back to the very beginning of this interview, like the 40 years, like the fact that Ninja has hung in there, like it, it has a stronger cult following in many, many ways than, than break-in. For me, especially, Especially because Breakin was about the guys. They are the break dancers. And, you know, that was like a real thing back in the day. That was, you know, in that time, that's what was happening. It was current. And, you know, I was just a girl, you know, hired to play this character and, you know, learn it. I mean, I've, I know I was part of the film and it was a big part of it. But, um, you know, I think the popularity was really a lot about Ozone and Turbo. <laughs> you know i think you you were a strong person in that era as well for being iconic i mean 
as far as the movies are concerned because i know around that time beach street came out and beach street a lot of people are just like what you know i'd rather go see breaking again let's go and then of course like the book that i got of sam i mean right there. i know <laughs> it's so awesome <laughs> So yeah. I, I always think that you you really did, you know, fill the shoes of some really iconic characters for for both genres of movies. And that's, you know, that's why I was like, I was super excited when you replied to that was like that made I was like, this is a great ninja day for me because she's she replied to me and we're going to meet up and I'm going to interview her and it's going to be awesome. Um, Because, yes, I mean, like I said, watch these films at the in the 80s. And a lot of my friends grew up with them as well. Yes, the ninja stuff is really starting to make a comeback now because I see that, you know, there's a lot of stuff from the 80s coming out now. You've got like Shogun's coming back and then Netflix came out with their own uh, House of Ninja series now, which is pretty interesting. It was really good. But I, it, it almost seems like we're on the edge of another ninja movie revival, so to speak. And because it, I know that there's a lot of movies that are kind of being rehashed that don't really work well. That, but there are some stuff that's working. I see, like, like I said, Shogun. I want, I'm two episodes in, and it's pretty good. But okay, well, if Ninja Three were ever to be remade, would you ever consider doing a cameo for the for the movie? <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what what I would uh, what part that would be. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I would have to see a script. and Of course. Oh. There, have been, there have been times over the years that, you know, people have uh, sent me things and asked, you know, for Ninja, for Breakin, for whatever. Um, and, you know, nothing is really formed of, of any of it. So, you know, I, it would be a real stretch <laughs> to, to do that, um, you know. I mean, maybe, uh, yeah, possibly. <laughs> okay, good to know, good to know. And then are you, do you have any other events coming up with like uh, more screenings or anything in the future? Or You know, I haven't really heard of anything more. Um, I have, you know, had a few other, you know, people reach out for interviews. And um, I was, I was actually thinking of, uh, putting something together in my hometown in Hutchinson, Kansas, January 26th of 1985 was Lucinda Dickey day. And they screened break into electric boogaloo. Um, it's not, a it's not a theater anymore. It's a shoe store, but my hands and feet are still out in front of the, what was the theater. And, um, I just thought it might be kind of a fun, uh, you know, make it sort of a family reunion. I wouldn't necessarily get people, you know, other people that were in the film to go there, but uh, I just thought it might be kind of a fun thing to do just for the people that yes. are there that might be interested. Um, but yeah, I was sort of surprised actually that with Breaking uh, 2 that, you know, February 24th was like, it's really early in the year, you know, but uh, Breaking is May 4th, I believe was the date. Um, and then of course, Ninja in September and then Breaking 2. So yeah, anything could happen. Yes. I don't think it's all over. It's just the beginning of the 40th anniversary year. I know. So. I wanted to try and get my foot in the door with y'all now with you and Sam, because I was like, they're probably going to, it's the 40th anniversary. Who wouldn't want to want to meet up with them now and kind of flash back to these movies? Because everybody that I talked to still love all these movies. And so I was like, I'm gonna go and ask now. I'm gonna get my I'm 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 gonna get my interviews in now if I can. So <laughs> I have to say it caught me by surprise because I'm I wasn't even paying attention when I got the first you know thing. Sam actually had emailed me about the the screening, and I'm like, oh wow, it's forty. This is the fortieth anniversary. I like it was not even on my radar, you know. <laughs> so I'm just embracing it, and I'm open to to whatever comes of it, because, um, you know, it was a fun time in my life. And, you know, those, I mean, there it's still around. I mean, it's, you know, the movies are still out there and people are still interested and, you know, I'm just going with it, going with the that's, flow. That's awesome. Lucinda, you, you definitely were 
were iconic in in that in that uh, in those movies, and that's why uh, all of us today, like I said, when I've talked to people and said I am going to be doing this interview, do you have a question for her? It's like, really, is this happening? I'm like, it's happening. So <laughs> tell me, what do you want to ask her? Because yes, everybody still loves those movies and embraces them, and even though. Like what Sam said, with these movies, they're they're done and then they're kind of forgotten, but they haven't been forgotten. They're still with us, you know, to this day. People love them. People still want to see these be re-released and, you know, with better editions if possible. But of course, you know, the, the technology is kind of limited when those movies came out. So, yeah. Yeah. But, but yes. So that's pretty much what I have today. For this well, interview so i really really appreciate you yeah well thank you for reaching out to me and showing the interest and uh i hope that um i am actually you know feel like i'm gonna have to sit down and watch one of these movies it's been you a should. long time the last <laughs> time i did was with girlfriends and it might have been like 15 years ago and we had because i have other friends that have been in other you know movies of that era and we literally just did like a, a whole day and tonight screening with, you know, bad food and popcorn and, you know, and just laughed and laughed. And, you know, but that really was the last time that I think that I've watched any of them. So <laughs> maybe it's about time, maybe for the 40th. Well, obviously I saw Breaking 2. Yes. Uh, uh, I have to say I had a great appreciation for how hard we danced. I had, I, you forget those things, but watching all those big numbers, you know, Billy Goodson put together some amazing production numbers in the streets, in the miracles, but wherever they were. And it was phenomenal that I really, um, you know, I kind of feel like I'm watching that girl, those people, you know, way back when, but it was a lot of fun. I, we just, I really enjoyed it, you know, seeing it again and, in a different light, you know, from a different perspective, it was a lot of fun. And we can definitely see that in, in, in your portrayal as those characters, you know, that you did have fun with it, but seeing a lot of the behind the scenes and stuff, you, you really worked your tail off, really did. So much respect to you on that. I mean, of course, yes, you had the dance experience, but you had to still learn what break dancing was, but then also, you know, be, uh, be a woman of action, an action lady of the 80s is what I call them. So uh, that was amazing. Much respect to you. Continued respect to you, Lucinda. I love it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome.
there you have it, folks. Uh, another interview in the books there. Uh, this one was definitely a fanboy experience for me. Um, because, yes, majorly crush on Usenda from, you know, from the from the movies back in the 80s up until now. Uh, lovely, lovely person to talk to. She was just so much fun. Um, yes, y'all got to see me in full giddy as a schoolboy mode. Uh, as far as future interviews, uh, of course, I would love to interview the man himself who's up there in the poster over here too, uh, Mr. Shokasugi. I know that he kind of tends to do his own Q&As on his own YouTube channel, so maybe one day, uh, no pressure. Uh, I do want to say, though, that that I think we would have fun. Um, so maybe at, a, maybe at one of his, if he does another uh, meet and greet at Republica Ninja, uh, hopefully we'll get a crew of people going and check it out and hang out with him and maybe share some laughs with him and, and so forth. Um, I'm also looking to try and reach out to keep a tally uh, from Revenge of the Ninja. And then, of course, my other ninja movie crush. Well, there's two others. There's, of course, Ashley Farrar from Revenge of the Ninja. And that woman loved her in Revenge, loved her in The Master. Um, and then, of course, uh, Judy Aronson from the American Ninja series. Uh, outside of that, if there was ever a woman that I would probably have another schoolboy crush on, uh, if you haven't heard of the Ukraine uh, metal band Ginger, J-I-N-J-E-R, you need to. Tatiana, I had a major crush on her. I met her twice at a couple of meet and greets. One here in San Antonio and the other one in Austin. And yeah, I was a little, little schoolboy, you know, and I painted a custom... Uh, Boba Fett helmet that had like the ginger symbol on it or their their emblem and I called it a ginger fit helmet and I remember taking a picture of her with the bat glasses that I gave her and then as I was walking away she grabs me by the back of my shirt and she goes wait and pulls me right back and of course I went into just like floppy fish mode because it was like she just touched me holy smokes anyway so yeah uh, those are my crushes and uh, if I'll post a link to Ginger below. If you haven't seen them, you're in for a shock. A uh, really good surprise, I think. And then, um, yeah. Uh, Want to reach out to Keith Vitale. Uh, would love to reach out to some of the other stars. And then, of course, I know we've got American Ninja coming up. I haven't delved into doing too much stuff yet for American Ninja, but that is in the pipeline. And then, um, yeah, Keith Vitale, and then who else? Arthur Roberts. I would love to talk to Arthur Roberts. And I don't know if Timothy Van Patten would like to have some, you know, flashback time to the master. Uh, I think it'd be kind of cool to talk to him as well. So I'm trying to put feelers out there and, and, and see if we can get some more interviews here. But to me, I, I feel like I've I've reached the mountain of gold in in interviewing Sam and interviewing Lucinda. That to me was just like okay, I, I'm good now. I'm really good now, as far as you know, completely content with with the interviews that I've done. And would I love to do more? Yes. Would, hopefully, y'all would love to see more as well. So I'm working on it. I'm also working on meeting with some of you and. Um, sitting down and talking about your collections and your passions about these movies and such. Maybe even hopefully getting some interviews with, who knows, maybe some of the cast members from Shogun or or um, or House of Ninja would love to do that too. So uh, those are things that I'm kind of networking about, you know, just a little grassroots uh, production here. Uh, one uh, one cell phone, well, it used to be two, but now it's down to one cell phone production company here. <laughs> and using my computer software and stuff like that, learning it. Um, I'm an old dog trying to learn new tricks. So anyway, 
Um, some of y'all paid attention on the community boards. I'm kind of letting go of some stuff. Uh, I need to, for one, I've got, I've got a, I got a kitten that I need to make sure that I have things in place for her. And then also too, I've got some, some major debts that I need to take care of. So I'm probably keeping my, my junker sword that I found at the flea market. And I already sold the stunt sword, so it's going to a good home. I know some people are like, no, and I'm like, hey, it is what it is, you know. So at least it's going to a good home. Uh, I'm also selling the eBay, eBay sword, and I may be selling my loose sword that you also saw reviewed here. Um, just mainly because I need to kind of buckle down and, and tend to some adult things that... Uh, kind of fell on the wayside when I had COVID and my and my uh, bank account got hacked. But this was a while back. So, but anyway, uh, I'll save my laundry. I'll save my laundry for another time. As far as dirt, air, my dirty underwear and stuff like that. Um, if y'all want to reach out to me about the loose sword, email me uh, and we'll talk about that. Anyway, uh, next. Episode 5 of The Masters coming up next week, folks. And then I will probably start doing some uh, retrospects for some movies soon. I haven't caught up with Shogun yet. I'm only two episodes in. Um, been so busy tending to some other stuff. So um, hoping to watch episode 3 fairly soon. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you want to support the channel for right now, buy a shirt. <laughs> I always say that. Um, yeah, if you want, if you want a shirt, get a shirt. I'm, I'm going to be working on another design still. So hopefully there'll be something that, that everybody will like and that everybody will, will take an interest in and purchasing. So, uh, if you do great, if you don't, I totally understand. No worries. And then, uh, but yeah, next episode will be, we're going back to the master and doing the retrospects there. I think now we're doing... Now we're doing high rollers. So, I keep forgetting my dang old timers is kicking in. So, anyway. With that, folks, hopefully you enjoyed the interview. I'm looking forward to doing more. I'm looking forward to doing some interviews with some of you. And, yeah. For those of you that, that are subscribing, for those of, those of you that have subscribed, I can't thank you enough. Uh, I really enjoy uh, sharing these moments with y'all. And finding that common ground and just enjoying the you know being in the moment and enjoying it and um yeah here's to many more times thank you folks shinobi one signing off <laughs>